It's a bit hard to uh, see exactly how bright it is on camera because the lens blows it all out. Uh, there's much more glow happening to what's happening in real life. So this is one of those automotive ring lights that runs off 12 volts that does auto PWM. So you just feed it 12 volts or up to, I think you can go up to 36 volts. And so I've got this mounted on this plastic part here that's PLA right now because I needed to make sure that it worked properly before I did ABS because I don't have much ABS left. And there's a couple of holes front and back for M5 insert nuts that I can then screw in just to tighten it into the spindle just enough. It's a really tight fit as it is right now, but of course the machine vibrates. And as you can see, it's got quite a lot of bright work area lighting up. I've still got lighting to do in the main Kazar area. I've got my lighting ready to go. I'm just currently printing some adapters for my strips that will go on the inside here, uh, facing out and angled down slightly. So there'll be um, 12 volt white LEDs along here, pointing down. And I actually got enough, I'm printing enough brackets that I can also maybe go down that side there to get some lighting this way. Well, can't see where I'm pointing, that way. But anyway, I'm a bit worried about the fact that it's, it's blocking, potentially blocking some of the air coming out from here. I don't know, I can't even see what I'm videoing right now. So the way the air comes out of the spindle, the heat. So for those that are unaware, this is an air-cooled spindle. So the intake is up here, there's a fan, and it, or the spindle itself is a fan. And so as it's spinning, it's sucking air through and pushing it out here. So I wanna make sure that I'm not blocking too much in here, but I think that's a really nice kind of lighting setup, being able to see what it is that you're cutting. Looks really cool on video. I'm going to wire it into uh, one of these switches here and also with the other lights. So I'll be able to turn all the lights on and off from here. Um, something I'll quickly show you now. I've got it unplugged at the moment, but I've got a touch screen mounted to the front. No comments about the electricals, no comments. Um, we've got the USB for power for the touch interface and HDMI goes through there. And then I've got a Raspberry Pi four mounted there. Um, I need to clean all this up right now. I've just got power boards in here. Um, that's a 12 volt um, supply that I'm using. Well, I'm using that for the RGB lighting RGBW lighting and this one here is for the LED ring right now, but they will both get joined from this up to here and I'll have some 12 volts coming down to the switch. So, but I'm probably gonna end up just with this power, with a power board in here, just glued to the shelf. I'll tidy the wires up um, rather than trying to feed all the power. So the screen needs its own five volt, like two amp power and the Raspberry Pi needs five volt, whatever amps, three amp power. And then I've got the, the 12 volts. So there's a lot of power coming in and I don't wanna just stick lots of different power things here. And I don't want to break all that into mains coming in and then broken into other power supplies. I, I just, um, I'm worried about messing with the mains any more than I've done right here, which is more than I should have done. So for the moment, I'm just going to tidy these cables up and leave them in here. And I've just got power that comes out there. Uh, this actually plugs into the power board and you get a shorter power cable. And so I've just got my mains cable up there and have one other cable here. I cut a new thing here, I'm gonna make a plug for it. The idea is that they go to a, a splitter. So both get power, I've got the Milo unplugged right now, but they both get power from this and this is a 15 amp cable that goes to a 15 amp plug over on my wall. I've got lots of 10s, but scattered around the place, I've got 15 amp plugs. So that's the plan. So it is all coming together. I still haven't done my second cut, but all of my um, stuff's turned up, finally. So I've got uh, 80 millimeter wide, uh, four millimeter thick, 500 long, and 60 millimeter wide, four millimeter thick. This is what I need for my brackets. 
So they finally turned up, they got lost. I need to cut the stock down. But yep, getting there slowly. One day I might actually start using it. I had another crazy idea. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Uh, I'm not sure why no one's thought of this already or maybe they haven't discarded it. So there's this chip kind of shoot here. So these on the side are angled down um, and then they go into this chute. If I was to stick a screw there, it would roll all the way down into the chute. The chute goes on an angle down backwards, but there's no place to get the stuff out. Um, it's all closed off at the back. But I had an idea that what's if the chip chute here was actually an angle going down from the front and down from the back to the middle and put a hole, cut a hole all the way through the bench and then stuck a bucket underneath here and have all the stuff go down into a bucket rather than stay in here and have to be cleaned out from in here. Uh, I don't know how much it would fall automatically, but you could just, the rest of it could be swept down into the hole, into a bucket, and the bucket could just be taken away and, and cleaned and emptied. So it's just a matter of drilling a hole. I've got no problems drilling a hole through benches. Big deal. Just a piece of wood and then another, the bench top which is timber and some plastic over the top of it. I don't care. I mean, I need to get Milo out to do it, but I'm thinking of that as a way to get rid of the, the rubbish. But I don't know. Anyway, I just want to get to the point where I am cutting. Um, we've also got some new brackets here coming. This is actually locked in place, but it's not using, it's sitting on this feet, but it's not actually using the feet to lock it down. It's got brackets there, back whatever else. I want to change these feet and have them come forward and clamp onto the here as well. Um, so I've got those designed, but I haven't printed them yet. Uh, slowly chipping away at it, slowly, slowly. Thanks for watching. Catch you all later.